Hey folks, Gary Bunzer here, the RV Doctor. I'm here with another episode of Motorhome House Calls. Welcome. I've got a letter here from uh, Gerald Oliva. And Gerald, you don't tell me what uh, city or state you're in, but here's your letter. First of all, let me thank you for all the great seminars you presented at the rally. Well, I appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to the next one. I really picked up a lot of great information. I have a Tiffin motorhome and have six coach, six volt batteries. Six six volt coach batteries is probably what you're saying here, uh, Gerald. All works great, but I have had water boil over since I got the coach. I don't think the cells have too much water in them. In fact, I thought that they may, that may be the problem. So I took some of them out with a large syringe and still have the problem. The water that boils over is very corrosive, so I monitor it often. I wash the area with uh, apple cider vinegar and then rinse well with water when it starts to corrode, but can't seem to stop it from boiling over. Any information would be greatly appreciated. Well, Gerald, uh, what's happening evidently, uh, I'm not sure which uh, converter charger or which charging method uh, that uh, Tiffin used in your particular motorhome, uh, but typically uh, when batteries boil over or the electrolyte boils and gives off that odor and it uh, the gassing, basically you've ex exceeded the gassing voltage limit for that battery bank. Uh, it all depends on the amount of voltage being pumped into that battery during the charging process. Gassing voltage uh, typically peaks out at around 14.4 volts. Uh, that's what typically the point that the electrolyte will start to boil. The sophisticated chargers, uh, when the gassing voltage is re reached, it will uh, stop and go down into an absorber stage or a float stage. Of, uh, of battery voltage. So the problem apparently is, uh, now you'll have to have someone perform some measurements for you, but the problem apparently is the voltage is not cutting down or not reducing below the gassing voltage and therefore the converter charger simply just keeps pumping that high amount of voltage into the battery bank. It's not a healthy situation for the batteries and some of the not so sophisticated ch uh, battery chargers are in some of the RVs that are out there uh, this is a common occurrence. In other words, that's why I always encourage an upgrade to one of the sophisticated three-step battery chargers, uh, whereby once that gassing voltage is reached, then the, then the current drops down, the voltage drops down gradually as the battery bank accepts a charge. You've got a healthy battery bank with six six-volt batteries. That's a, that's a fairly large battery bank, so I'm assuming you have a uh, fairly large uh, battery charger connected into that system. Uh, I would recommend uh, if you don't have the capability yourself to measure uh, voltage and and, uh, and current flow, I would definitely take it into a shop and have the uh, have a certified tech take some measurements for you. But I'm guessing that if you were to measure the voltage at the battery terminals where the charge line comes into the battery bank, that you're going to be exceeding 14.3, 14.4 volts, uh, which is not a good situation. That needs to be cut back after a period of time. Uh, just before it reaches that gassing point so you avoid boiling over the batteries. Uh, one of the things that's very important to realize about gassing voltage and about battery charging for that matter is not only the amount of, of voltage that is pushing the current into that battery, but it also has to be relative to the temperature of the battery bank itself. Uh, high temperatures can affect the charging rates just as much as low temperatures can affect the charging time and the charging rates. So I would definitely have a, a technician take a look at that uh, system just to make sure that you're not uh, overcharging the battery with a higher than normal uh, voltage somewhere exceeding 14.3, 14.4 volts. Um, another thing to determine is how clean the battery bank is. You say you, you keep it fairly clean by washing it down, which is one of the very best things that you could possibly do. Uh, I think I have a photo here to show you of a battery bank in a compartment that is not so clean and tidy. In fact, this one is pretty, uh, pretty filthy as you can see here. So uh, I might have a, a follow-up photographs here in, in just a second to show you after the cleaning process at least how nice it looks. If you have the dirt and any of the sulfation or any of the uh, 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 outgassing that has happened uh, coagulate on top of the batteries, that's going to cause some issues as well. 
So keeping the battery bank clean is good, uh, making sure that it is receiving the proper charge voltage and current as it relates to temperature. That's the key. All of those three things have to combine in order to uh, achieve the optimum charging capability. So take some measurements and let me know what you find out or have your certified tech uh, take some voltage reading measurements both at the charging converter or whatever type of device you're using to charge the batteries as well as what it looks like at the battery posts themselves. It's about how much voltage is actually received at the battery bank itself. So that's my guess, Gerald. I think you're just getting too much voltage into that battery bank.